for that. <laughs> um, it is the season of love, and um, tonight's message is entitled, What's Love Got to Do With It? And I have to be honest, I had to look up the lyrics to the song because that's the only part that I, it ever plays over and over in my head. Um, so those of you who are like me that don't really know the gist of the song, uh, Tina Turner was singing of um, kind of heartache and um, her desire for a mere, mere physical relationship because she had been hurt in the past and she didn't want anything to do with the love part because her heart had been broken and she just wanted the physical part and, um, you know, her, her, in her words, what's love got to do with it? But... Isaiah 43, 4 says, because you are so precious to me, you are honored and I love you. Lord Jesus, I pray that tonight in this time that we have together, that um, we would ask ourselves that question, what's love got to do with it? And Lord God, that we would see our answer in you and you alone. Um, open our hearts, open our ears. Um, let every word that comes from my mouth, Lord God, be straight from you. In Jesus' name, amen. And actually, in an answer to Miss Tina Turner, love has everything to do with it. We were created in love. We were spared by his love. Um, he sent his son in love. We were saved by love, and now we live by his love. So yes, love has everything to do with it, because God is love. He doesn't just love us. He is love. It is the very essence of who he is. It is the very person of who he is. It's not something that he does. It's who he is. He has no choice but to love because God is love. And love is a part of everything that he does. So what does the word tell us about love? 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 8. The word says, love is patient and kind. And I believe in this scripture, we can, because God is love, we can separate God for those words. Even God is patient and God is kind. Um, but for the sake of tonight's message, love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not demand a uh, I'm sorry, it does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up. Love never loses faith. It is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance, like we just heard <laughs> in our songs. And at the end of verse 8, it says, but love will last forever. Amen. And if we turn over to 1 John chapter 4, um, verses 4 through 12 tells us this is real love not that we loved God but that he loved us and he sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins dear friends since God loved us that much we surely ought to love each other no one has ever seen God but if we love each other God lives in us and his love is brought to full expression in us and I want to focus in right there for the sake of tonight's message and to kind of pull this all together verse 11 tells us but if we love each other God love God lives in us and his love is brought to full expression in us since God no one has ever seen God we are the vessel through which his love flows we are God's love that people sees and if we would kind of grasp our head around that, that, you know, if it's up to us to show his love, we have to live a life of love. Amen. We have to love the people around us, and we'll get into that here in just a second. But his love is shown in our love. Because if we are not loving, people aren't going to see his love. Um, Mark 12, 29 through 31. Sorry, Heath, I'm really working you. <laughs> When Jesus was asked the question about the greatest commandments, of course it was about love. And so many times we hear love God, love people, love God, love people, or love God, love others. Um, sorry, I'm in Matthew. Er, Jason was in Matthew 12 this morning. We are in Mark 12, and I will get there. See, this is what happens when I actually try to turn. Usually I just have it all typed in here, and I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> um, 
but Mark 12, 29 through 31, um, Jesus answers them back and he says, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart. Sorry, that's verse 30, but we'll keep going. With all your heart, with all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. The second one is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. So, in essence, it is love God and love others. But there's kind of a, kind of a, a twist to that. Of course, we are to love God first. We are to love him with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, with all our strength. Every part of our being, we need to love God. Not because we love him, but because he loved us first, and um, as First John told us. But I believe, instead of just loving God and loving others, I believe the next part is to love ourselves. Have you ever been around someone who really does not like their self? Do you feel miserable around them? Yes. <laughs> if, you don't love to, if you don't learn to love yourself, how are you going to show God's love? If you don't understand how much he loves you, how are you going to tell someone else how much he loves them? I believe that we really need to just see how much God loves us and come, you know, find that part within us that we can really love ourselves. Not a, not a boastful, not a proud kind of, oh, I love myself, you know, self-centered kind of love, but love ourselves enough because he loves us and realize that he has poured, you know, everything he has into us, into creating us, into forming and fashion, fashioning us and giving a purpose. And we are his love personified. We're the vessel that his love flows through. So I believe first we need to love God and then love ourselves. And once we love ourselves enough in the way that he needs us to, then we can show others his love. Then his love can flow through us. And how can we tell someone that God loves them if we don't see his love for us? He loves me so I can love me. And when I learn to love me, I can love others and show them his love. So, in loving others, I believe that love can be seen directly. Um, let's just say my mother sitting right here. She can see God in my love for her, but also you guys can see God in my love for her. So, your love, the love of God when you love others can be seen directly and indirectly. So, we need to always think about how we're loving people because others are seeing it all the time. It can be direct for the person that we're loving or not loving. And then that lack or that love or the lack thereof can be seen by others too. So I believe first, I believe a lo most things, all things start in the home. You know, it's our relationship with God and then those within our home. Love for our spouse. Ephesians maps this out for us. The love of a husband and wife for one another. It tells the husband to love his wife as Christ loved the church. That's a serious kind of love. He, Jesus Christ gave himself for the church, so every husband is to give himself for his wife because they are one flesh. They were joined together, and I believe the second part of that says that, you know, the wife should respect her husband and submit to him, and when the husband is loving the wife the way he should, then it's, it's not hard for the woman. This is kind of the day and age that, oh, no, I'm a I'm woman. I don't have to be under submission to anyone. I'm my own authority, you know, that kind of strong woman kind of thing. But when God places a man over the head of a home, I think that's the greatest kind of strong woman thing <laughs> is to come underneath of that and be submissive in Christ's love, be submissive to the husband. And if you're not married, you know, you, you can purpose that in your heart before you get married or, you know, all those kind of things. If that doesn't particularly pertain to you with the spouse, just learn it before you get into it instead of having to fix it later. <laughs> you know, that can help. Um, the next part in Ephesians 6, the first part of it, um, talks about the love of parents and children. That is so important when people see the way you love your children. It is important for your children to know that you love them. And it's important for your children to know that you love Jesus. You know, the Sunday school teachers here, the kids' church teachers, they can tell your kids, you know, till they're blue in the face how much God loves them. But it's something else coming from mommy and daddy. Absolutely something, you know, a whole different ball game when they see that at home and when it's, you know, when it's emphasized at home. It's very important. And it's very important for your children to know that mommy loves daddy. They can know mommy loves me and daddy loves me, but it's a certain stability for your children when they know mommy loves daddy and daddy loves mommy. 
Very important. So, you know, in your home, it's very important to love one another, and that lets God's love flow through in those relationships. I believe also that we are love, or we are called to love other Christians, um, whether they're in this local body, whether they're in another local body. I don't believe there should be any kind of dissension between brothers and sisters in Christ. First Peter um, three eight says, "Love each other as brothers and sisters," and I believe that you know, unbelievers and other believers the like will see God's love and they will see true love when we love one another. I, I believe that they will see God in that. I believe that they will see God's love when you love your enemies. Matthew 5.44 tells us that we're to love our enemies and not just for them but for you. You know, maybe they don't even accept that love, but so that you can have a peace with God and so that you can minister to people. And by minister, I don't mean like you go Bible thumping, but so that you can show the right kind of love. I believe it's important that we love our enemies and get past, um, get past differences and, you know, whatever might be between us. And also, lastly, that we love the world. He says, be in the world, but not be of it. You know, we can love the people in the world. Um, we can love them to him. We can show them his love and uh, really just not be judgmental to people in the world, not pointing fingers, not, oh, I'm better than you, but just love them to Jesus. You know, just, just show God's love at all times. And in First John, we're going to go back there because that's where we saw that we are his vessels through which they see his love. And if we move on down to verses 16 and 17, it says, We know how much God loves us, and we have put our trust in his love. God is love, and all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. Verse 17, And as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. And not meaning that we become more perfect, but that love, God's love in us, becomes... Uh, it, just starts to develop and becomes more perfect, not saying that it is perfect, but that love, it's, it's becomes more well-rounded. If, if you get where I'm, where I'm coming from, it's not just love for one person or two people or just the people in your circle. Your love becomes really well-rounded when you're, um, uh, in his word, when you are praying and you have a right relationship with him, that's when his love becomes more perfect. And maybe you're thinking, I have such a hard time loving people. You don't know these people that are around me. You don't know my spouse. You don't know my kids that give me a hard time. You don't know the, you know, even the people who call themselves Christians that I'm directly really, you know, in, come in contact with. You don't know my enemies. You don't know the kind of world, you know, that is around me that I live in is so hard. Um, if that's you and you have such a hard time, just know that situations, circumstances, of course, they make it hard. They, they can, you know, really throw a wrench in this whole thing of trying to become Christ-like. <laughs> Do you agree? People around us, it is, they make it so hard sometimes. And really, I believe that's the enemy that doesn't want, he doesn't want God's love to be spread. You know, he's, he's, see, he's sneaking around seeking whom he may devour. He doesn't want God's love to be spread. He, you know, he wants to halt the plans of the kingdom. And it's hard sometimes for us to accept God's love, um, anything that you've been through, um, different hard times. But when we put our trust and our hope and our love in God, you can come to a full understanding of his love for you. And then you can share his love with others and the essence of Christianity is really to reflect the love that he has shown to you I believe that's that's what we're what that's what we're called to that's what the Great Commission is to go and make disciples love on people show them God's love and you know love them to Christ and love them to an understanding of him it's God's love in you that can love because you know we're just humans it's really hard for us it's hard for us to love people um, just our flesh that's in us, but it's God's love in us that can love others. So spread the love. Can we do that? Can we do that? Can we understand that, you know, what's love got to do with it? Love has everything to do with it. That's what we're here on this earth to do. That's what our purpose, you, you want to know a purpose? Love people. Love God. Love yourself enough that you can show others his love and um, just spread the love. <laughs>
Can we do that? Can we spread the love? Spread the love, people. So anyway, I just pray that that word has spoken to you in some way and that we can really spread the love because this is, it's, I know it's the day after Valentine's Day, at Valentine's Day, but it's a season of love and uh, show those that you love how much you love them and those who it's hard to love, find it within yourself, say, God, help me love. You know, there's nothing wrong with praying, God, help me love these people because <laughs> it's even really hard right now. But love has everything to do with it because he is love. So, we will go ahead and pray, um, and then I, I'll go ahead and pray for the food, but then we'll, uh, we will do prizes and such. Lord God, thank you for this time. Thank you for this word. I pray that it would settle in our spirits, Lord God, that it would take root.